Well, there's been a, uh, you know, just a general heightened sense of uncertainty from all circles this year that we haven't really had any other time uh, this cycle. And of course, we all know that the uh, PE multiple is adversely correlated to uncertainty. So there's that aspect of it. And, and I think that you're 100% right uh, that the market is uh, repricing uh, growth for next year. I mean, we all know second quarter was great. We all know third quarter will be roughly 3%. Uh, but, you know, if you're buying the equity market, you're not buying it on yesterday's news. You're buying it really at this point. What does next year look like? And it looks like it's going to be a very challenging year, not just for the U.S. economy, but for the global economy. Uh, you know, the, the trigger for me uh, was this one arcane statistic nobody seems to talk about, uh, which is the OECD leading indicator, uh, which has actually gone down sequentially now for nine consecutive months and has dialed its way all the way back to December 2016. So the clouds are there for the global economy next year. I mean, it was obvious to me when, you know, when you see the Chinese stock market down more than 30% for the year and things started to crack there. I mean, really early this year, it never recovered. It's the world's second largest economy and there's not a snowball's chance in hell that you're going to get a decline in the Shanghai index to that extent and not have it reverberate around the world with a lag. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now. David, a lot of people wonder whether the sell-off will give the Fed room to uh, reason to pause in terms of their interest rate hikes. Do you think the inflation picture in the U.S. will allow them to do that next year? Well, you know, I think that we have a different sort of, um, uh, of, of person at the head of the Fed. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, if we continue to get a sharp downdraft in the equity market, uh, you know, one of the other cracks happening right now is that high-yield spreads are widening out. Uh, if this continues and it causes the Fed to second guess its uh, optimistic economic forecast for the next 12 to 18 months, uh, then of course uh, they will pause. Maybe at some point they'll be forced to even ease policy irrespective of the inflation environment because we all know inflation is a lagging indicator anyways. Inflation peaked in the summer of 2008 when the U.S. economy was already more than six months into the worst recession since the Great Depression. So. Uh, I wouldn't be so worried about the inflationary backdrop as if, if the market goes down enough um, and it causes the Fed to reassess its economic forecast. That's the key. Will things get bad enough to cause the Fed to backtrack on its rosy growth scenario? That's the point at which the Fed is going to stop uh, tightening monetary policy, but not before.